Welcome to Electron Online. Again, here's another good example to help us understand Newton's laws and friction in certain setups. What we have here is we have a mass, and the mass is attached to a spring that has a spring constant of 800 newtons per meter. Let's say the mass has a mass of 20 kilograms, and now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the mass to the right. Notice there's a coefficient of static friction between the, the surface and the mass of 0.5. And so we're going to pull it to the right, have it stationary, and then let go. And I'll pull it right some more, and let go, and pull the right some more. And what we want to know is what is the maximum distance we can pull the mass before it starts sliding back. So how do we figure that out? Well, again, when we realize that nothing is going to move, so if, if, acceleration is equal to zero, then we know that the net force must also equal to zero. Then, so if that, then this. In other words, we're going to identify all the forces acting on the mass when it's extended out to this distance, and then see what the conditions must be so that the object will now not start accelerating back towards its equilibrium point. So once it's over there, we then can say that, well, the spring is going to be pulling to the right, so that's the force of the spring, and that will be equal to the magnitude of the k, the coefficient of the, of the spring, times the distance that it's been extended. And notice that the force is acting to the left, and the magnitude of the force is the spring constant times the distance away from the equilibrium point. And at the same time, we also know that there is a force due to gravity, which is mg, which means there's a normal force pushing back, n, which is going to be equal to mg. And then, what will prevent the mass from accelerating to the left? Well, it would be a friction force to the right, force friction, which is going to be equal to the normal force times mu. And in this case, it'll be the static coefficient of friction if we pull the mass outward and then hold it stationary before we let go. So that that way we deal with the, the static coefficient of friction. And so we can say then is that nothing will move, so the block will stay in place as long as the maximum value of the coefficient of the friction force is greater or equal to the force caused by the spring. So we know that there will be a net force equal to zero if this force is less than the maximum force the friction can be. So let's understand that a little bit more. So what I said was that no acceleration, so no A, when the force of the spring is less than or equal to the force caused by the friction. Because what happens is, let's say that you pull it out just a little bit, then the force of the spring will be very small, and then the coefficient of, then the friction force will be small as well. In other words, the friction force can only be equal to or smaller than the force that you apply, because as you continue to, as you continue to, to pull the block further outward, I'm pointing in the wrong direction, as you continue pulling the block further outward, you will increase this value, and that means that this will simply respond to that force. So the friction force is actually a reactionary force. In other words, the value of the friction force will always be equal to the value of the force of the spring until you pull it out so far that the value of the force of the spring becomes larger than the maximum that the friction force can be, and at that point, the object will accelerate to the left. So in other words, the friction force, as you increase the force on the spring, the friction force will increase, increase the force on the spring, the friction force will increase, become equal as you pull the block further and further out, but eventually, the force of the spring becomes so high that the friction force cannot match it anymore because the maximum friction force can be is equal to this. That's the key of the friction force. The friction force is a reactionary force, but can never exceed this particular value. It can never exceed n times mu sub s. So let's find the maximum friction force. So the friction force maximum is equal to the normal force times mu, which is equal to mg times mu, and of course that would be the static coefficient of friction. So this case would be the mass is 20 kilograms, so 20 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square times mu sub s, which is 0 0.5. So this is equal to 98 newtons. So that's the maximum the friction force can be. Now, let's find out 
what x will be when the friction force equals the maximum and what that equals the force caused by the spring. And so maybe I should put up the maximum friction force, as long as this is less than or equal to the maximum friction force, it will not move. Okay, so the force of the spring, that's equal to kx, has to be less than or equal to the maximum friction force, which in this case is going to be mg mu sub s, or kx has to be less than or equal to 98 newtons, because that's the maximum the friction force can be. So when we come up here, we could then say that x is equal to the maximum friction force, or less than or equal to 98 newtons, divided by k, and so x has to be less than or equal to 98 newtons, divided by 800 newtons per meter. And of course, x will be less than or equal to, that will then be in meters. So 98 divided by 800 equals 80.1225 meters. So less than 0 0.1225 meters, or x should be less than or equal to 12.25 centimeters. As long as the distance you pull the mass out it's less than 12.25 centimeters, and you let go, the block will stay in place. So, what does that mean? Well, let's see here. Let's say that if x equals 5 centimeters, what will the force of the spring be? Then f of the spring will be equal to k times x, which is equal to 800 newtons per meter, times 0 0.05 meters, which is equal to 40 newtons. So when you pull the block out 5 centimeters, the force on the spring will be 40 newtons. Since the maximum force that the, that the friction force can be is 98 newtons, it's less than the maximum, the block will not move. What will be the friction force at that moment? Well, it turns out that friction force at that moment, force friction, will also be 40 newtons because it will simply match the force of the spring. Now what happens that if x equals 10 centimeters, then the force due to this of the spring is equal to k times x, which is equal to 800 newtons per meter times 0 0.1 meters, because 10 centimeters is 0.1 meters, that will be equal to 80 newtons. Notice that it's still less than the maximum the friction force can be. And then you can say that the force friction will also be 80 newtons, because again, the friction force is simply a reaction force, Newton's third law. If the force applied by the spring is 80 newtons, the spring, the friction force will pull back with a force of 80 newtons. And eventually, when the force of the spring becomes 98 newtons, then the friction force will be 98 newtons. If you then pull out the block a little bit more, and now it's, let's say, 100 newtons, then the maximum force of the friction be being 98 newtons will be less than 100 newtons, and the block will begin to slide to the left. So hopefully that will give you a better concept of the, the friction force, knowing that the friction force is simply a reactionary force. It can only be equal to the force that, uh, that is applied to it, or if the force that is applied to it is greater than the maximum the friction force can be, then the friction force loses, and the block will accelerate. And that's how it's done.